So let me start with this question for the physical examination. Is it positive sign? Usually we learned the positive sign of a drop arm test is they just dropping their arm, just like uh, literally the name of this test. But many of my patients show this kind of result. So they can lower their arm slowly. So this is not the positive sign in conventional textbook way, but many patients complain they can lower their arm, but it hurt. So they support the arm with other hand. So is it positive? What do you think? We discuss about this a lot. What is the difference between just dropping the arm, conventional textbook positive result, and they can lower arm, but it hurts, and they should support the falling arm or feeling apprehension, scared. What do you think? What is the difference between two tests, two research? What is the difference? Severity. The only difference is severity. If the tendon tear is a full thickness tear, half thickness tear, they will just drop their arm. Very severe tear. But when the patient have a very minor tear, we usually call them tendinitis, it just hurts. But technically, they are same condition in different spectrum. What is the positive result of drawer test or Lachman's test? Let's suppose you have a patient with a knee joint pain and they injured their knee, right side of knee, with uh, fallen injury or during the soccer play or skiing. So you suspected ACL tear. Let's suppose that is a scenario, scenario in your clinic. And how can you confirm your hypothesis? By doing Dewar test or Lachman's test. Then what is the conventional textbook positive sign? Transition of the shin forward. That means rupture or total tear of LCL ligament. Before we talk about the principles, let's talk about purpose of the test. Why we do the test? Because we cannot see them. We cannot see them. It's, so it is just like a mystery box, right? And we don't know what is inside. So here is the irony. This is a simple truth. Truth. This is very important. If we do not know what is a cat, if we do not know what is a cat, there is no way we can tell a cat is inside of that mystery box. It is, is it just common sense, right? It is a common sense. To figure out cat is inside first beforehand, we should know what is cat. Am I right? That is the reason I told you we study the basic kinesiology of the muscles, actions and attachment, anatomy, and basic knowledge about the diseases. First, we should know about the disease. That is something like you learn about cat. Then you can suspect what is inside the box. What we are testing through this procedure. Only two things, simple two things. Where is the problem and how bad it is? So the tissues, possible culprit, ligament, tendon and muscle, bone and cartilage, and nerve. Only four. We studied about them and we know what is the specific signs of each tissues. Ligament, instability, tendon and muscles weakness and pain with the resistance and bone and cartilage pain in deep inside with the compression and nerve tingling and shooting pain with the compression so we'll just learn about that so we can guess with the physical examination what tissue have the problem that is the location where is the problem and second we can tell the cause it is simple. They are all inflammation. Inflammation, in case of tendon, we call them 
tendinitis. Ligament, just sprain. Tear, rupture. Tear is quite significant tear. Rupture, usually referred to very severe tear, like a total rupture, total tear. But these all three conditions are same condition. Then how we do the test? Principles of orthopedic test. There is only one rule, one and only rule. So I'm summarizing everything today. We presenting the problem, mostly pain. So you are suspecting this. You are suspecting ACL tear or you are suspecting meniscus tear. If it is an injury of meniscus, this action will reproduce the pain. It's the very delicate way of torturing without damaging the patient, but you should be able to reproduce the pain. That is the reason why we call orthopedic test what? What is the other name of orthopedic special test? Provoking test, provocative test. Which one is right? Anyway, either way, provoking. So provoking pain is the essence of most of orthopedic special test. And to conduct physical test, there's two main procedures. You know about this. First one is stretching them. Ligament and tendons, you are stretching them. If you suspect of ligament and tendon injury, this is the first thing you should think. Oh, I see, you have a ligament and tendon injury. Then I can reproduce the pain by stretching it. Can you tell this? If the, it is an injury of the meniscus, I will, I can reproduce the pain by compressing it. So this is the one and only rule. And first one, first maneuver is stretching it. And second maneuver, what do you think? Squeezing it, compressing it. So only two way, stretch or compress. So by stretching, you can examine tendon, ligament, and muscles. And by squeezing, you can examine bones, calluses, and nerves. First, stretching test, ligament, tendon, and muscles. So how do you stretch it? Whether it's virus test, virus stress, or virus stress. And you can apply them wrist, knee, elbow, anywhere. When the patient have a ligament injury, when you suspect patient have a ligament injury. So this is a virus test. And this is a virus test. I'm repeating this too much, so I will just skip through. And this is a virus, virus test for wrist. So when you make this virus stress, and this lateral side of ligament will be stretched. Stretch means widening the wound, injury. That makes the pain. And ankle, same. When the patient have an injury, ligament tear here, with this tilt test, this is called Tala tilt test, but actually this is a, just the same mechanism of virus test. So giving stretch stress on the stabilizing ligament. So a patient will express the pain here. This is a provoking test. So when you have an ankle joint sprain patient, you can confirm your hypothesis by this Tala tilt test. If you suspect this ligament tear, you can test by pulling forward. And this is anterior drawer test. And this is elbow test, same manner. Then how can we interpret properly all these problems? Please remember the first question I gave you when we start this class. Patients do not have a much of a transition with anterior drawer test of knee, but patient complained of pain and the end point was not clear. So how did you interpret them? That is not a conventional textbook positive sign. Textbook positive sign is transition. But there was no transition, but I told you that is the positive sign. And we can tell the severity with those different signs, different result. So that is not black and white result, but it is kind of a story, a long story. So how do we tell tear, sprain, strain, rupture with orthopedic test? So 
This is the grade 1 tear. We usually call this inflammation, tendinopathy. And this is grade 2 tear. We call this tear. How about this? We call this usually rupture or total tear. And this is a tendon tear. Same thing. We call this tendinitis and we call this sprain, but actually same injury. Grade 1, 2, 3. Only the difference with severity. So how can you tell the severity? If there is this kind of transition that is grade 3 tear, rupture, total tear. Let's suppose patient have this ligament tear and you tried anterior drawer test of ankle, but patient usually do not show that much of a transition like 1 cm or 2 cm. Patient show just pain and unclear end point. Then that it is grade just one or two tear. So pain can be a sign of grade one tear or two tear or three tear. Anything is possible. So pain is a very important sign of all this stretch test, tendon test and ligament test, both of them, both of them. And end feeling. End feeling, maybe you are not familiar with this term, but you should be getting used to this one. When the patient have a strong ligament or tendons, that end point is very clear. When you conduct the anterior drawer test of the knee, please remember this one. Anterior drawer test of the knee. When the patient have a very strong ACL, it stops suddenly at a certain point. Very strong end point, clear end point. But patient have a grade 2 tear, end point is not that clear. How can you say that? How can I say that? When I pull more, if I pull more, it seems like it will pull more. It will be pulled more. That is an unclear end point. Can you get it? So you should try it and you need to experience it. Unclear end point. So healthy end point should be like the leash of the dog on this angry, furious dog. So here is tightening, very clear end point. But end point can be soft and mush. That is the sign of big tear, significant tear, grade 2 tear. So this is examining side feeling, so please practice it. And these are all signs of ligament test. Lachman's test, Trubert's test, or Varus test, or Vargus test. Patient pain and stability, instability, like a hypertransition. And practitioners altered, end feeling, altered, changed end feeling, different end feeling. So all these stories, all these stories tell you the severity, severity of the injury. So you are checking the location and also severity with physical examination. Tendon test is a little bit complicated, a little bit. And this is the general way of working of muscle. You just contract the muscle, right? Contract. This must contract and you move your arm. But what if you contract the muscle, but practitioner or this weight is holding down this bone, forearm, not to move? What will happen? This will happen. Can you see that? I made this by myself last night. Contraction of the muscle and the stretch of the tendon. So what do you think? If there is an injury here, injury there, it will be wide open open with this kind of contraction. So this is the very basic technique for checking tendon problems and muscle problems. Resisted contraction, resisted contraction. Ironically, this is the way of stretching the injured part. This is the contraction. So holding it not to be moved. She tried to extend the wrist but practitioner is holding it. So muscle is contract contracting, but actual movement is not happening. That means this tendon is 
obtaining stress from both sides, both sides. So this is exactly the same thing with this one. Identical, different part. Holding it, the muscle is contracting without movement, and the tendon is stressed. So this is a golfer's elbow test, and this is tennis elbow test. Mechanism is identical. This is the restrict contraction of extensor muscles, and this is rest resisted contraction with the flexor muscles. So golfer's elbow, flexor. Tennis elbow, extensor. Only difference with the muscles. Mechanism is the same. Mechanic is the same. And how about this? This is a little bit complicated, but you can tell this. This is Jobet test, and this is the way of testing which muscle? Supraspinatus. Supraspinatus. Because supraspinatus is the muscle you raise your shoulder, abduction of the shoulder. So this is a way of resisting it. Resisting it, and patients try to contract, raise the shoulder, and contracting deltoid and supraspinatus. So when they have a problem here, muscle and tendon, they will produce the pain. Here, this is the supraspinatus. And let's see how supraspinatus raises your shoulder. See? Uh, this is the front, and that is the back. This is the back side, and this is the front side, and this is the scapula. Let's say this is a trunk. This is a trunk, and this is your shoulder. So this is a contraction of the muscle. Contraction of the muscle. This is a rotator cuff tear. Technically not rotator cuff, but supraspinatus tear. So what do you think will happen when you try to raise? What do you think will happen? In this injured area because muscle contract this injured area will be stressed this is what happening with your shoulder raise so you have an injury here so when you try to contract this tendon will be stressed so this is the resisted contraction of supraspinatus so uh, these two action looks kind of different, but actually these actions are identical. Which action? Shoulder abduction. These are all shoulder abduction. Jobe test, patients try to raise their shoulder. Raising shoulder is called abduction in medicine. Raising shoulder is a med abduction. So patients try to abduct shoulder and practitioner is holding. And drop on test, patients just try to hold it. So it was in a mid thumb. Do you remember this? So it is a matter of the severity. Actually, we think drop on test is the test for the rotator cuff tear, but that is totally wrong. How many muscles are included in rotator cuff? Four, yes, that's right. But this test has nothing to do with infraspinatus or subscapularis. Is totally wrong refer, referring. This is test only test the supraspinatus tendon tear. So when the patient cannot hold their arm, that means grade three tear of supraspinatus, grade three tear, or very severe grade two tear. We can call that uh, half thickness tear. How about this? Same thing. This is the test. Usually we call this test for supraspinatus tendon integrity or tendinitis or tendinopathy. Tendon injury. Same mechanic but different severity. I will ask you a question. Which test is more sensitive? Sensitive means detect, can detect very subtle pathology, subtle abnormality. Which one do you think can detect very subtle pathology of the shoulder? Uh, shoulder is not the proper term. Supraspinatus. This one. 
this one is more sensitive because it is resisted. So even minor injury, this part of tendon will be bothered, irritated. So this is a force. Try to raise it against the practitioner's hand. But this one, against just gravity. So it is easier. So even with the kind of injury on a tendon, supraspinatus tendon, they can raise their shoulder without much of problem. That means drop on test is negative with those patients. That is the sign of low sensitivity. But drop on test has amazingly high specificity. That is the difference between two virtues, sensitivity and specificity. So patient shows a positive sign with the drop arm test. They can hold their arm. Patient definitely have rotator cuff tear, supraspinatus tendon tear. So this test is suitable for tendinopathy. Tendinopathy means very mild tear, grade one tear. And this is more suitable for grade three tear. That is the reason we just conveniently say this is the rupture test, rotator cuff tear test. And just conveniently, we call this tendinopathy test. So I cannot say, I cannot say that is completely wrong, but I hope you understand why this test is more sensitive than drop arm test. And more of that, I hope you understand the mechanic behind these two tests is identical. So this is the grade one tear. So I'm not just making this story. This is actually technical description of the tear. Grade one tear. Just tendinitis. And grade three tear. Rupture. Total tear. And this one, half thickness tear. Total thickness tear, half thickness tear less than half thickness tear, grade 2 tear. So same condition with different severity. So when you suspect this kind of tear, this test will be more suitable. And this kind of tear, this test will be suitable. But how can you tell patient have a small tear or large tear? So different sequence. You should do the test first. And then you can suspect narrowing down the condition severity and also when you have a hypothesis you can confirm it if it doesn't work you think about other hypothesis another hypothesis and you try your hypothesis with other tests that's how it goes I told you positive sign of lig ligament test is instability and pain and different end feeling and positive sign of tendon test pain especially with the resist that is the positive sign of all the tendon tests like this or golfer's elbow what else jumper's knee test and muscle weakness like a drop on test and here is a question please make me happy this is another rotator cuff one of the rotator cuff another one of the rotator cuff infraspinatus how can you test the malfunction of an infraspinatus like an infraspinatus tendinitis how can you test that how how do you test that infraspinatus here then we need to start from the basic anatomy and physiology what is the action of the infraspinatus and what are the attachment? What is the attachment of the infraspinatus? Here, obviously, lateral side of humerus. And this is scapula. I told you scapula is the trunk. So this muscle is attached from trunk to outside, lateral side of humerus. So trunk to humerus, trunk to humerus. And what does this muscle do? What is the action? So this is the action of infraspinatus. When it gets short, then how can you test the integrity of the infraspinatus? How will you do the test? Test the patient. 
patient is able to repeat this motion without problems, it should be performed once again, but this time against resistance applied by the examiner. And this test is like a Jobet test, confirming the test with resist. Okay, summary, ligament, take care of stability, and tendon and muscle, take care of movement, right? Tendon and muscle, take care of movement, and ligament, take care of stability. So how do you test them? Test instability or increase the transition. Ligament, because that is, those things are what ligament does. And tendon and muscle problem, you test weakness. Because weakness, the force, is what tendon and muscle does. So all the tendon tests, not all, most of tendon tests involve the resist. Pressing test, cartilage and bones, and meniscus, press and rotate, bone and cartilage. This is the picture from my book, push and rotate, push and rotate. So, do you remember patellofemoral pain syndrome? That is the problem between this femur and patella, patellofemoral pain syndrome. So the cartilages between these two bones have an inflammation. How do you test it? Press and rotate, press and rotate, press and rub it. That is the way of testing patellofemoral pain syndrome. So not literally rotating, but pivoting and rotating and rubbing. Well, same mechanic, just like this, push and turn. So this, that is the part that is called patella grind test. Yeah, literally grinding, push and grind. If there is a pain, if there is friction, if there is a locking, that is a positive sign. More common case, meniscus tear. How do you test? Press and twist, just like a bottle cap, drug bottle cap. Press, press this way and twist. And you should imagine this meniscus is squeezed inside and getting irritation. Right? This is a way of irritating the meniscus tear. Simple. Sharpies test. This is a test for the TFCC. So, pinky side. TFCC is a structure with the uh, cartilage. It involves the ligament, but most of the injury happens in the cartilage between two bones. Here is this very small cartilage, and they get torn, just like a meniscus. Then how do you test? Compress and twist, just like a bottle cap. And this is sharp, uh, another test for TFCC, and this is called compression test. So these are the positive signs of cartilage test. Pain with compression. What is the positive sign of tendon problem? Pain with resistance. Cartilage and bones, pain with compression. So how do you check the scaphoid fracture? Compress, where the scaphoid is located. Compressed. If the pain is produced, reproduced, that is likely scaphoid fracture. And locking, friction, instability. Another sign of cartilage problems. And usually pain is deep inside of the joint. Like a meniscus tear, the patient says there is a pain deep inside of between two bones where the meniscus is located. But ligament tear is kind of significant, easy to notice, because the area of pain is clear and location is superficial, right under the skin. And you can actually palpate the collateral ligament with your fingertips. So they are different. Why all these following tests are same? Because they share same mechanism. What is this test? First dorsiflexion of ankle. First dorsiflexion of ankle. What is this test for? Ankle anterior impingement syndrome. So there's a jamming. 
So with first door deflection, you are irritating that clash, bumping. And this is the jamming, bumping of these two bones. And here is a meniscus. And this is a compression test for cartilage. So all these tests examine something between two bones with compressing and twisting. So if you suspect something inside between two bones, you can test this way. And nerve, press, pinch, tap. So bones and cartilage are relatively simple. The test of bones and cartilage are simple. But nerve can be a little bit tricky. This is a thin nail sign. You just tap where that suspected nerve injury locate. Median nerve, ulnar nerve, tarsal nerve. And compression test. You just compress two vertebra to squeeze out the disc and to irritate the nerve. So that is a way of irritating nerve. And CAMPS test is just lumbar version of compression test. Exactly same mechanic. So tilting to the injured side and extension, right? Of cervical vertebra. And this one tilting to the injured side, then rotating to the back. Like this. So it is an extension with compression. So lumbar area is compressed. Then what happened? Disc is bulged down more, a little bit more than irritate the nerve again. That is the mechanic behind the CAMPS test and cervical compression test. And I told you this is the way of checking the facet joint problem too. So how did you check the bone and cartilage? Compress and twist, right? And exactly this is the way of doing compress and twisting. So you can check facet joint syndrome. You can examine facet joint syndrome with this manner. So with the CAMPS test, you can check the facet joint problem, also radiculopathy. And this is a SLR test, straight leg raising test, and this is essential test to screen neuropathy from nociceptive pain. So 10% of low back pain patients have a neuropathy problems, and you need to differentiate them because they have a different prognosis and different management, right? So that is very important thing. How can you tell the neuropathic pain from nociceptive pain? SLL test can give you an idea. So with the, this leg raising, you are pulling the nerve from downside, and with this neck flexion, you are pulling the nerve from to upward here, this way and this way. And here is nerve entrainment will be irritated by pulling it, just like my vacuum cable. And this is slump test. The mechanic is identical. So crunch, slump, and neck flexion is a pulling the spinal cord upward. And raising the leg is the pulling the nerve root downward. So pulling from both ends. From both ends. That means this cable, not cable, nerve is get, getting tight and making irritated by the tissues in vicinity. Here, namely, protruded, protruded disc, both disc. So with the SL test and slump test, we can rule out, find out nerve neuropathy. So this is a compression test, CAMPS test, and cervical compression test. This is the way of let the disc bulge out and irritate the nerve more. And this is the SL test and slump test. By pulling from both ends, we can tighten this nerve, irritate the entrainment nerve. And this is the way of increasing meningeal pressure. This nerve is surrounded by dura mater. Dura is a very solid and hard membrane. So you are pulling dura 
from both sides, that means this nerve inside getting tighter inside of that tube. Tube is lengthening and irritated, and the nerve is more irritated. That is what happening with SL test and slump test. To interpret right properly, you need to understand the nature of pain, neuropathic pain and not septic pain. Neuropathic pain produces radiating, shooting, tingling sensation, and not septic pain produces throbbing, dull, achy, sore. So you need to tell the difference, nature of the pain. Here. This pain, tingling, shooting, electricity. This pain, maybe shooting. This pain, totally not septic pain. So nature of pain is different. You need to be able to tell the difference. And this pain, all not septic pain. So then, what is the positive sign of nerve test? Reproduction of chief complaint, like a tingling, tingling and shooting and electricity, and neuropathic pain quality, and pain on remote area, like a pinky side of toe, or tingling on a calf, those are all remote area. So these signs are the positive sign of nerve test. Should be like this. So let's summarize that. Ligament problem, ligament tear, and ligament injury, usually the pain is localized, right on that area. And pain worsens with stretch. And what is the function of ligament? They stabilize two or three bones, right? That is something like a bolt and nut. Stability is their responsibility. Oh, it, it is a rhyme. Stability is uh, their responsibility. So we can check the ligament by instability. Hypertransition, hypermobility. That is the positive sign of all ligament tests. All the ligament tests. So this is the summary for ligament test. Stability is the function of ligament. So how can you tell the malfunction of the ligament? By checking instability. Instability is shown as a hypertransition or hypermobility with varus test or vargus test or other range of motion test. And second, tendon test. Tendon is part of muscle, right? Tendon, ligament is a structural department, like a car frame, frame of the car. But tendon looks very similar, but this guy is part of moving department, like engines shaft. So tendon and muscle, what is their function? What is the function? Moving, pulling, pulling the bones. So weakness is the sign of their malfunction. Regular function is pulling, forcing. So how can you tell the malfunction of the tendon and muscle? By its weakness. We can tell it has a problem. So draw bomb test is a very um, typical weakness test. So when they have a rupture, they can hold their arm because of weakness. And pain worsened with stretch, just like ligament. Uh, there's a little bit of difference because, because of muscle, we usually do resisted stretch. So I'll, I'll go get back to that again too and cartilage and nerve, we can test them by compressing it. And cartilage and bone pain, usually dull pain, but if there is a fracture, it does not end up with dull pain, but it will have a, you will come up with very sharp and throbbing pain, but I'm, I'm just talking about cartilage injuries or just minor fracture, very minor fracture, like a hairline fracture, linear fracture, and pain worsens with compression. This is the golden rule. The scaphoid fracture, you can check them by compressing it. And nerve problem, shooting and tingling is the key of the differentiation, the nature of the pain. And just like a muscle, you can check the weakness when the patient have a nerve problem and weakness 
is always a red flag because weakness is severe that means nerve have nerve nerve has irreversible damage so this is a sensory part of nerve in physiological perspective this is a sensory part and this is a motor part so this is a sensory part of malfunctioning and this is the motor part of malfunctioning and you can check them with the malfunctioning of nerve so when you know the physiology just pathology comes to you naturally and you can think about how to test them how do you test it irritation usually mostly by compressing it okay please read the rest of the book and you can see many examples and those examples will help you understand the physical examination with actual patient case so i strongly recommend you to read rest of book book by yourself okay here is a summary this is the end jobet test drabam test near sign those are all supraspinatus tendon test i told you different severity and different disease they are telling your story uh, here should be r r telling your story not positive or negative black and white but just they tell your story long story you need to be able to interpret the story and now you can i'm sure you can carnic sign meningitis sl test slump test and hamstring test tells you a story too tells you the story too this is not a black and white differentiation it is not the matter of process of conducting the test but it is a matter of understanding and interpretation so orthopedic tests are communication between two humans so this is not just one way procedure it is not like a laboratory test it includes emotions and subjective feelings subjective feelings like end fit end point feelings both patient and practitioners and patient will tell you all different description of the pain provoked pain and patient all different responses are not all the same you can get just information as much as you understand right this is what we discussed all through the semester okay thank you very much